In this video, we take a look at the wireless protocol Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance, with and without request to send clear to send. When we use wireless communication, what is the actual data traveling over? Wireless networks use electromagnetic radiation to transmit data between two points. Like radio stations, Wi-Fi operates on a frequency or channel. Here we see a typical example showing how different frequencies are set to different Wi-Fi channels. Devices on the same channel communicate with each other. Here we can see that channel 6 is broadcasting its Wi-Fi signal on a frequency of 2.437 GHz. If your wireless access point or home router was broadcasting on channel 6, any other device in your house also connected to channel 6 will be able to send and receive information on the network. Each channel has a range of 22 MHz, which means channels overlap slightly. For example, channel 6 bleeds into channel 5 and 7. Modern networks can cope with this to a certain degree as they can sort message via filtering. If many nearby LANs are broadcasting on the same channel, it's often sensible to change the channel you're broadcasting on. So say I want to send something from my phone connected to channel 6 onto my home local area network. Which protocol manages this? How will my phone even know if the channel is available to receive my outgoing message? Maybe it's offline or busy dealing with requests from other devices on the network. To manage this, we use the Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance Protocol. We'll look at two variations of it, one with and one without request to send clear to send. So let's start by looking at CSMA CA without RTS CTS. We start with the device assembling a frame ready for sending out onto the wireless network. It then checks to see if the channel we want to transmit on is idle. If it's not, the device waits a while and checks the channel again. If it is, it transmits the frame out onto the wireless network. Now let's have a look at the same protocol, but with RTS-CTS. So it starts the same. The device assembles a frame ready for sending out on the wireless network and it checks to see if the channel is idle. If not, the device waits and checks the channel again. If it is, the device sends out a request to send message. If the device doesn't get a response or a negative clear to send response, it returns to step two. If it gets a positive clear to send response, it transmits the frame out onto the wireless network. Let's discuss now what we call the hidden node problem. The hidden node problem is a great example of why we use protocols like this, especially ones that include the request to send and clear to send components. With this setup, we can see the wireless access point has enough range to communicate with both node A, the computer, and node B, the phone. However, nodes A and B can't hear. They're not aware of each other as they're out of range. This isn't normally a problem unless both nodes try to send information to the wireless access point at the same time. If we're using a simple CSMA CD protocol, we could end up with collisions. By adding RTS CTS, nodes A and B don't need to be able to see other nodes, make assumptions about how many other nodes there are, or know whether other nodes are currently transmitting. RTS-CTS effectively adds an extra layer of protection. Nodes simply say, I'd like to send something, and it's up to the wireless access point to let them know whether it is a good time to do so or not. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is the CSMA-CS protocol? And what difference does it make by adding an RTS-CTS to that protocol?